The topic of this video is graphing functions from the library of functions. All right, let's solve this problem. Graph the square root function f of x equals the square root of x. Hint, choose perfect squares for x. All right, well, the first five perfect squares are 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. Notice that it is not possible to have a negative value for a perfect square. This is because when you square a real number, you will always get a non-negative result. For example, a positive times a positive is a positive, and negative times a negative is also a positive, and zero times zero is zero. Okay, so now that we've chosen appropriate values for x, we'll plug in to find the values for y. For example, if x is equal to 16, then, y is equal to the square root of 16, which is 4. If x is equal to 9, then y is equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. With this in mind, it's my hope that you've now picked up on the pattern. Start with x, take the square root, that gives you y. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 0 is 0. Now we plot our points. To do this, we need a graph scale. Notice there are no negative values, which means we will only need quadrant 1 of our graph. And our graph goes all the way out to an x value of 16. So this is going to be a very short, very wide graph. All right, so I'm going to make a dashed square at the origin. This allows me to set the scale of my graph and determine the location of 1 and negative 1 on both the x and the y axis. Erasing the corners allows me to now equally space all of my tick marks. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20, and on the y, all the way up to 5. All right, so now I have a place to plot all of my points. Let's begin. 0, 0, the origin is here. 1, 1 is here. 4, 2 is here. 9, 3 is here. 16, 4 is here. When we connect these together, we get the kind of shape that we would expect if a parabola fell over to its right and then the bottom half of it was lopped off. Now, something that's very important to notice about this graph is there's no points to the left of the origin. You could say that the graph starts at the origin and then continues on upward and rightward forever. But there is no part of the graph that's over here. And the reason why is because you cannot take the square root of a negative and expect to get a real number. For example, if x was negative 1, you'd get the square root of negative 1, which is i, i for the imaginary unit, which we will not be graphing in college algebra. All right, there we go. We have a graph of the square root function.